Hello, everyone, and welcome to Collider's non-spoiler review of the movie Ghosts in the Shell, starring Scarlett Johansson, directed by Rupert Sanders. Uh, Joining us on the table today is... Uh, Perry. Hi. <laughs> That's my camera. Yeah. Not and the chin. Also... <laughs> Hi guys, Wendy Lee Zaney here. Yeah, and I'm Dennis Zen, and we just watched the movie, and this reminder, this is a non-spoilers review, so we're not going to spoil anything from the movie, but we will give some, like, overall thoughts and some little, maybe not plot details, but maybe vague, overarching thoughts about it. Um, I'll start off... I didn't hate the movie. I don't think it was a <laughs> terrible movie. Let's get into it. Yeah, then. I'm yeah. going to get right what into it. What better way to start yeah. it? I didn't hate the movie, yeah. but... <laughs> but I don't think it was a good movie. Visually, it was fantastic. It looked great. I mean, Rupert Sanders, who also did uh, Snow White and the Huntsman, I also thought that movie was visually fantastic, even though I didn't like the movie. This had some of the similar problems that that movie had, where... I didn't connect with the characters. Uh, the pacing wasn't very good. It was it was kind of boring. Um, the acting I think was okay. I think from certain you know I think maybe a little inconsistent here and there, but it it was fine. It, nothing stood out from that department where I thought it was it was bad. But I think just the characters, the pacing, just emotionally, it just didn't grab me. Perry. Uh, yeah, I had a pretty similar response to this. Um, just to talk about the good things, I guess. There, I don't think that the visuals were great across the board. Mm -hmm. There were some parts where the CG looked a little too CG yeah. to me. Like, it, it was a fake digital character doing certain stunts. Some, just like some of the frames of the movie are absolutely gorgeous. You've probably seen some of this stuff in the trailers, like the city landscape type stuff, and some of the, some of the the robots that are featured, some of the costume elements, really really cool. And I can't say that I really felt for any of the characters except for maybe, and I, I can't say his last name, uh, Pilu. Oh, I think he uh, was he was probably one of my favorites. Who plays but, Batu? Yeah, which is yeah. Like his, he, and then he's also from Game of Thrones. Plays Euron Greyjoy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think his his relationship with Scarlett Johansson in the movie was probably one of the most moving to me, and it wasn't particularly emotional. It was just one of the only bonds that I really believed in, how they worked in the field together. And, you know, he, he's got, like, a cool look and a really great presence to him. But, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was very slow. It was very slow, and while I don't think any of the performances were bad, th they were very... They were all very monotone, and I understand that this is a world where people are robots, so I get the sense that they were being directed that way for a reason. It just made a lot of them very difficult to connect to, and it made the movie kind of dull. Mm -hmm. Wendy? Yeah, I got to echo you guys' thoughts here. I went in this movie having seen the anime, you know, um, in the past really liked the property, so I was like, I, I think it's going to, from what I saw in the trailer, I knew it was going to look visually stunning, and that what was what I liked the most about the whole movie was the cityscape, like you said, Perry, and all the technology that they had implemented in the movie, so they definitely didn't shy away from that. They showed us that a lot. Like, you know, that's where a lot of the money went into, and they were like, we're going to show you exactly what this looked like. But for the characters, aside from Batu, I really didn't care for any of them, I didn't feel invested as I did when I watched the anime. The movie moved really, really slow. I um, mean, it was at an hour 47. Boy, did it feel so yeah. much longer <laughs> than that. Um, and just, it just like, it would pick up every now and again with the fight choreography, but then it started to like dwindle a little bit. I. Man, I wish I could say more good things about this movie. But And now that you say that um, Rupert Sanders, right, the yes. director, that he directed Snow White and the Huntsman, I didn't know that until you said it just now. It makes sense that that both of the movies, it's kind of parallel, like the, yeah. the way it was structured and stuff like that. So visually, looked fantastic, but um, character development and all that other stuff wasn't quite there for me. Yeah, I, I also read the manga and watched the animated movie, and I like those. And this, on the other hand, I just didn't connect with it. I mean, things that I like, yeah, we mentioned the visuals. Uh, some of the action sequences were okay. They weren't, none of them were standout fantastic, but some were decent. And then um, the music, uh, Clint Mansell, who's uh, one of my favorite composers, did the music, but he also they also used 
some of the original music from mm -hmm. uh, Kenji Kawai, who also he did the original um, Ghost in the Shell movie, the animated movie music. Mm -hmm. He also did Akira. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you heard it, I think, in the beginning of this movie yes. and at, at the very end of the movie. And, and I like hearing that. Um, <laughs> other than that, I, I, I guess I, I, to your point, uh, Batu and and the major's pr uh, relationship was the closest yeah, yeah. thing that we Julia got Pinoche to Julia Pinoche almost gets there. There was definitely some sort of spark between her and Scarlett Johansson mm -hmm. that I was starting to get on board with, but I think there's there's too many pieces missing. And you know, you guys are both familiar with the source mm -hmm. material. As a complete newcomer to Ghost in the Shell, I understand why the story had to go in the direction that it did because it's major story. It had to play out this way. The best parts of the movie to me, though, were the things that were setting up world building and just the state of the society and the dilemma of do you enhance yourself or do you not? And yeah. just how she's coming to terms with her current situation. And, you know, it mentions it every once in a while, but it really doesn't scratch the surface of it at all. And that, that's kind of actually a problem I had with a little bit of the dialogue. A lot of the dialogue in the movie is just very on the nose. Yeah. Uh, I guess another positive, even though he had a very small role, was a uh, Japanese kind of iconic actor, director, Beat Takashi. He plays uh, Aramaki, who is uh, kind of like the head chief of, of mm -hmm. their division. He wasn't in it very much, but I, I like but too. I like what he did with that. It was And it was cool seeing him in that role. That's kind of it for positives for me. Oh. How about you guys? One more thing to add was that I love that Aramaki spoke Japanese through the entire film. I thought that was a nice touch mm -hmm. um, because it's it's a mixed cast. So I thought that was just like a nice touch for, for someone who watched the anime. <laughs> like um, when they opened the first line and I was like, it's just so weird. I don't know if it was you because I watched the anime in Japanese with English subs. So yeah. it was really weird to hear some of these lines in English. So I appreciated the little bit of Japanese in there. Uh, any other positives <laughs> you guys have for this film? No, not first not five really. minutes. I don't. Okay. I don't want to. First five minutes was cool. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, right? No? Yeah, I, I, like, I like the spider geisha or whatever. Yeah, uh, I yeah. guess. I mean, I, I think you that's... You see the trailer, that's not a I spoiler. I was going to say, that's mm. probably the problem you run into when you also release a five-minute clip, and it happens to be one of the, the most well-composed fight sequences in the entire film, mm -hmm. and we saw it all. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's get to the negatives, uh, and we mentioned some of that stuff before. Uh, Wendy, why don't you start off? I mean, for me... The, one of the, neg the biggest negative for me is that it, I didn't feel like, and I love Scarlett Johansson, and I love Major in the um, anime, but I just didn't feel connected to her at all while watching this film. And it was very, it just really dragged on for me. And I found myself kind of zoning out moment to moment where I felt distracted and I was kind of looking at other people's reaction in the theater, which I never want to do when, I want, when I'm watching a movie or I want to be fully invested in what's in front of me. So I think that, that was a major negative for me that, that I wasn't able to stay in it the whole time. Perry? I don't want to give the impression that Ghost in the Shell is complete garbage. There's a lot of things in this movie that, you know, are, are commendable efforts. It's just the fact that when it all comes together with this final feature that we got, it all just falls so flat. Like, this is the kind of world I want to be enveloped in. I need to care about the characters, and that kind of just didn't happen at all. There's a big difference between trying to convey, you know, I'm a robot, and then also having personality. They don't have to be two completely separate things. And it feels like everyone is just playing their character super, super flat throughout the entire movie. And I kind of just got bored with all of them. And I started to not care if they died. And the, the pacing of this is extremely slow. It is 140, it's, it's an hour and 47 minutes that feels like it could have been closer to like two and a half yeah, hours. I felt and, it. and even in the end, when I got to the end of it, I didn't feel like I got anything out of all that time that I spent with these characters in this world. There's just, there was nothing I was really 
enjoying all that much. Wow, now it's sounding like I'm completely trashing the movie. I've seen worse, <laughs> but I, I guess I'm just disappointed. I should put since... that on the poster. I've seen worse. <laughs> I've seen right? worse. Harry Nimrod <laughs> on the Ghost please, in the Shell. Please don't do yeah. that. I'm, no, I'm just disappointed. Somebody's because... photoshopping that right now. No, I know, probably. <laughs> just having, you know, followed the, the promotional campaign yeah. and reading up on it, mm. knowing how uh, hyped people are about the source material, I thought that this could have been something a little more than what it was. And, you know, to see Scarlett Johansson kind of put in this box where mm -hmm. I, there was so little emoting, like she couldn't really do anything. It was just the same note throughout the entire thing. And it, that just doesn't work. Yeah, and I never connected with her character because we won't get into the details, but she has like a mysterious past. Mm -hmm. And so, but I was never emotionally involved and engaged with her character to even care yeah. about. There's also plot details. One, one in particular that obviously I can't say here that doesn't make sense. Okay. There's one particular moment where the movie contradicts itself and it, it bothered me. Okay. Well, uh, before we get into kind of our overall thoughts and our score and we sign off, there is the elephant in the room, which is... There, the whitewashing controversy about the casting of Scarlett Johansson. Mm -hmm. And the, the problem with this review is that it is a non-spoilers review, so we can't talk exactly about what happens, but it will try to do our best without spoiling it. Mm -hmm. I will say they try their best to explain it in a way, but I felt that it was really forced and contrived and awkward at times. And so it didn't work for me. They try their, it almost beca becomes like too much of a point that they're trying to explain it, mm -hmm. that it, it, it's a detriment to the movie. Uh, I don't know how you guys felt about that. I wasn't completely put off by the whole thing. I saw what they were trying to do. And I was actually surpri like surprised in a positive way with how hard they tried to fix that yeah. issue. And it did, it, that part actually does make sense when you think about it, but it is so heavy handed and they beat you over the head with it so many times that it's hard not to be like, well, why don't you just cast it different from the start? It, you know, surprisingly, I'm kind of on the other side of it. When the casting decision first came out that she was cast as major, I kind of did a, oh, well, that's interesting. And then I saw a photo of her and I thought, well, she kind of does with the hair and everything. She kind of does remind me of major and I understand the origin is anime but this is also an American adaptation so I didn't have as much problem with it and I thought it was ex executed not horribly okay yeah just me personally I don't think they pu pulled it off I think it became I don't know I, I think it hurt the movie at, at some points that they were trying to explain it so much I mean it's, it's a little tough to get into <laughs> but yeah you, if after you guys watch it you'll see what we're talking about all right uh Wendy uh overall thoughts and a score uh okay so I feel like um I feel pretty disappointed with this movie I was actually pretty hyped by the trailer but uh visually I still thought like the cityscape and everything looked stunning I like the the geisha the geisha was cool we saw her in um the trailer and as for everything else, the pacing, the character development, the connection that I had with anybody with the exception of Batu really wasn't there for me. So with that said, I'm going to give this movie a 5.5 .5 out of 10. Perry? Okay. Oh, score is such pressure. I know. Um, again, like Dennis said at the very beginning, I didn't hate it but I also <laughs> have absolutely no desire to ever watch this ever again. <laughs> I did find the pace to be kind of a killer here. I was I was fidgeting a little bit. I was looking forward to it being over. However, I'll give them some credit because some of the performances, particularly the one we've all been talking about, Pilu, who we can't say his last name. I'm sure someone will correct us and explain how to say his name properly. The performances were all fine. I think some of the direction was pretty rock solid. I wouldn't say there's any standout action sequences, which is a little disappointing from a Ghost in the Shell movie. I wanted to walk away with some really visually striking fight sequences in my mind that I could carry on and not forget. And really, it's kind of one big, you know, dark slash neon blob in my mind right now, which is unfortunate, but... I do have to give them credit for starting to put the pieces together in terms of that world building that I was addressing before because there's certain ideas here that I think are brilliant and completely fascinating. It's just unfortunate that the movie had to veer in another direction and couldn't, couldn't build upon those concepts a little more. 
I guess given the fact that I have no desire to ever watch this movie again, but I want to give them a little credit because there is some good in this, I'm going to say a 4.5. Okay, I mean, I guess maybe they can, if you're like somewhere at a bar or restaurant and they have like music on and you're drinking, they could have it on the background <laughs> on a TV because visually it looked really cool. But then it, almost it to, a, to a point where uh, you're talking about the action sequences. Nothing really stand, stood out as like a fantastic action sequence. Maybe they spent a little time making it a little too pretty. Mm -hmm. You know, I just didn't feel like, I don't know, anything kind of behind any of the action sequences. Um, they were also kind of short, the action sequences. I yeah, they, they weren't short very long. And, and no, normally, you know, I don't mind a slow pace if you're building to something. Like a movie like... Hell or High Water, which I it was my favorite movie last year, is a slow movie, but they build. They and build. You cared about them. Yeah, yes. I cared about within, the characters. Within one scene of that movie. You care about the characters, and when you build that tension and whatnot, I didn't feel any tension really in this movie. Um, it just yeah, seemed like, it seemed kind of like, paint by the numbers it's it's funny now that you bring that up and we we never even talked about it is i never really felt like her life was at risk even though that early on they do yeah. establish that she can be damaged i mean that's that's not really a spoiler mm -hmm. at all but re even though that was placed there for me i still mm -hmm. never felt like she was gonna die yeah yeah so yeah i'm disappointed just because uh you know i was a fan of the original stuff uh and and the trailers and marketing material look pretty good but but ultimately i walked away like not really like you probably never gonna watch it again <laughs> at least not in that context of i'm gonna sit down and and, and watch this film i'm gonna give it a 4.7 uh i i personally don't think anyone needs to go see this in the theater maybe if they want to rent it at home or or, or whatnot all right guys <laughs> that's it for that's our review your daily dose of yeah. collider bummers sorry yeah. about that yeah i mean it's not like we all <laughs> wanted it to suck it i wanted it to be good but unfortunately at least at this table Mm -hmm. None of us really cared for it. Uh, I want to thank uh, the people joining us at the, on our review today. Perry, where can people find you? You guys can find me on Twitter and Instagram at PNemeroff. Wendy? On YouTube at the Movie Couple channel and on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. And you guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero on Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Thanks to Cody in the back switching. And we will see you guys next time. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.